Hello, it's Moda time again, my favorite color, you know how it is. We're here at Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana, and I hope you got all your block done, your great big giant one. Actually, it was like nine blocks all in one. I got mine done, you wanna take a look? There it is, the first block in uh, cookie tin. Isn't it pretty? I have corners. All my flying geese are going the correct way. That's awesome. Now, one thing that I didn't tell you, talk to you about last week is grooming your block. You know, once you get it all together, sometimes there's little threads that stick out that if you leave them in there, the quilter's just gonna quilt them in. So you wanna go down every seam and make sure, now look right here, Peter. See how there's a little thread right there? It's a little, you wanna, it's a little quilt whisker. Yeah, it's a quilt whisker. You want to just kind of uh, check it out, make sure that all the threads, I left a few just so that you could see me cut them off, and uh, make sure that you're grooming your block so that when the quilter gets it, she doesn't quilt those little whiskers into the quilt, and then you can never get them out. So... Always groom your block. And then last week when I was sewing, and you know I got down to the end, and one of my blocks was turned wrong, and I'm telling you, my board is, is my safety boat. I mean, it's my raft. It's my, it's where I put them to, so I know, so I don't get them wrong. And so I was a little upset when I ended the video last week because that should not have happened. Well, so then I watched the video, all like two and a half million hours of it. I mean, it was a long one, wasn't it? So anyway, I watched and while I was sewing the one block, it flipped my board like that. You can go back and watch it, I swear it happened. And that's how I got the block sewn on wrong. So I took Peter's advice. Now this is one thing that this stupid COVID stuff has done to us uh, people that love to get together and sew together so that we can learn from each other. And I've missed that. I've missed that a lot. So last week, Peter said, why don't you just put top and bottom on? Well, all I really needed was top because if you know which is the top, you automatically know which is the bottom. So I took some of my um, uh, Scrabble tiles and I glued them on with my new glue gun that I got for Christmas. So now I'm always going to know where the top is. So if that moves again, I'm going to know that I have to move it back. Right? Good job. So we're ready to start block two. And if you have completed block one, you kudos. That was a uh, rough job. I mean, that took a long time. There was nothing hard about it. I wonder where everybody's at that's watching the video, yeah. like where they're at on their yeah. blocks. They should post a block. They should post a picture of their block to let everybody see what they're doing. That'd be awesome. I'd love that. Even if they just got the nine and they haven't got it all put together, you know, just take a picture of where you're at on your uh, block. That'd be fun to see. So I'm ready to get out block two. And in my book, I noticed that block three is exactly the same as block two. It's just that the colors are different. Okay, so we are going to this week do uh, block two and block three. Now I've already laid out block two. It's right here on my board. And it's called the courthouse steps. Uh, that's kind of the traditional name for it. It's a variation of the uh, log cabin. And tradition states or legend states or whoever's stating at the time that it was stated that the middle of the block represents the hearth, okay? So typically it's red unless it's made for someone who is in mourning. You know, not like gets up in the morning, but like mourning because someone has passed away. Then the center block would be black, okay? So if you see a log cabin or a courthouse steps, and the middle block is black, you know it was made for somebody who was at a death. If it's bright red, that represents the hearth of the home, the center of the home. 
and then the block the uh, logs that surround it then are the rest of the uh, room. So I think that's kind of a fun little thing that to know about your blocks. And if you look at your book, what we're going to do is instead of doing it in four or nine patches like we did last time, we're going to sew this one together in rows, in stages, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to start in the middle of the block, and we're going to grow from there. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to put flip that over. I know where the top of my block is, the, so I know what I'm doing here. I'm going to stay in line with that. So I'm going to pick this piece up, bring it to my machine. I'm going to start in the middle. I'm not going to pin because there's no seams. So nothing. I'm going to line that up. to wake my machine up today. She hasn't... She had the weekend off. She had the weekend off. My other machine, I sewed with it at home. I just leave this one here until this program's over. Uh, boy, I sure am glad I've got this on here for that little lip that was bothering me so much last week. Okay, now before I take this over and... Oh! I forgot my clapper. It's at home. Oh no, what am I going to do? We'll improvise. Okay, we'll improvise. Okay. I'm going to sew on my leader and ender. Since there's not a whole bunch of these, I'll just use my uh, scissors. I'm going to lay that back down where it went. Is it just this block that you start in the middle? No, there's a lot of blocks that you start in the middle. You know, it just depends. Watch your instructions. You know, the book will tell you. So now, these are not in my way to go ahead and sew these on. So I'm going to just do those before I take them over and iron them. I'm just going to go ahead and sew these on. Save myself some steps. Save myself some time. Now, if these pieces had been wider and had gotten into my seam allowance, I would have had to press those before I sew these on. But because they don't get in my way, I can just go ahead and sew them on at the same time before I press. And that's typically how it'll be on a log cabin or a, on a um, courthouse steps. And see how I'm just lining this up? Right there, I just know it's all lined up. Putting it under, knowing where my quarter inch is, that's very important, right? Get my ender here. Now I'm going to go over to the uh, sewing, I mean to the ironing board, and this is, oh, you know the um, clappers, clampers are on uh, a truck somewhere headed this way. We don't know where. Having trouble gathering my words this morning, I don't know why. This one would have been a real important one to have the clapper because, um, all these seams are now going to be in my way when I start to press. I'm going to turn that over. See how you just can't get it as flat when you don't have that clamper? Well, for heaven's sakes, Dawn. There we go. Oh, and then this one closed back up. See, if I'd had my clamper, I wouldn't have done that. I took it home because I thought, you know, it's such a precious thing. I thought somebody would take it. Not really. I'm just kidding. I needed it for the weekend. 
Did you have a lot of sewing that you were doing this weekend? Well, I had to fix those two big blocks, remember? Oh, yeah. I and remember. then I made a pillow that's oh, in the shop. The teardrop. The Riley Blake April Pillow of the Month. I made that. It's out on the floor to be seen. That's gorgeous. It turned out really good. Yeah, well. it turned out really good. And then, um, then I had to sew a couple things for a client. So, yeah, I sewed some this weekend. I didn't have Chloe this weekend, so I got a lot done. Chloe's my uh, brother's puppy. I babysit her, but usually not on the weekends. So usually I can get stuff done. So there's that. Oh, I keep forgetting that I can leave that down. I'm not used to this. I don't have one of these kind of irons at home. I wish I did, but I don't. And all I have to do is just slide it over there and it picks itself up. So now I'm gonna go back over here to my sewing machine. And I'm gonna sew these together. Now I have seams to match up. Oh, you know what a viewer said? Um, what? One of our subscribers said, what? she thinks the reason that we pin from left to right is because that's the way we read. Oh, that makes sense. Doesn't that? I, I thought like that, that. She's a teacher. She's like a school that. teacher. So that's what made her think that. So I think that was pretty good. That was pretty in, intuitive. Or, you know. I like it when people, you know, put their two cents in. It's nice. It it's, is nice. It gives it a sense of community. It does. Because anybody can put a comment or respond to the other people's comments on YouTube. And right. It just, you know, you meet a lot of people virtually when you participate in the in the videos that we post. And then when you, when we're able to uh, have classes. You already know these people. You, we know these people and you can come and see them. It's not like a dating service, though, is it? No. No. Because I was noticing today, Facebook has a new dating service. Of course, oh. I don't. I don't need any of that. I've been married forty-two years or something like that. Oh goodness. Yeah. To the same man. The no. Oh goodness, to the Facebook dating uh, service. Oh. Uh, not oh man to the. Oh no. Oh for, goodness. That's. That's beautiful to be able to be married to the same person. Yeah, a couple of those years were really nice. Was it the what, was it the ones at the beginning or the end? Uh, no, the ones at the beginning are hard. Didn't you think that the hard years were the first years? Oh my gosh, you were as poor as dirt. It's like survival. It is like survival. You're getting to know each other. You can't decide whether the toilet paper is going to roll from the top or the bottom. My hearing used to be really good. Until you got married? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, my husband's too. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, which end of the tooth, do you squeeze the toothpaste from the end or from the middle? But I'll tell you, the biggest thing, the biggest thing for me and my husband was, were we going to have Miracle Whip or Hellman's Mayonnaise? Mayonnaise. Guess what? We had to have them both. Yep. Because I'm stubborn and he's stubborn. So now we have both. We just get a little jar of each. And we try not to eat that much of it, but... Well, it depends, you know, what you're making. Right. If you're making a... Egg BL... salad sandwich uh -huh. or a BLT, you're right. Or a chicken salad. Right. And he loves his Hellman's, and I love my Miracle Whip, so... And I can't ever remember which one it is I like, and I have to ask my wife, which one is it again I like? Are you kidding me? She has to keep track mm -hmm. of that? Yeah, I can't remember. Whether it's the tangy zip of Miracle Whip or the, ham the Hellman's mayonnaise. The creamy... The creamy richness of the helm and the Yes. All right. Okay, now I've got that block done. Corner's really good. Now I'm going to go back to my uh, ironing board, and I'm going to press these seams open. Two seams. Notice how that red changes color. That doesn't bother me. Just some dyes do that, uh, but they go right back into place. 
They're called fugitive when they do that. Fugitive dies. It's just the characteristics of the dye. Okay, now look at that. It's yummy! Now, that could just be a block in itself, and later on down the road, we are... Peter, can you... Well, here, let me... Yeah, can, I got it. I got, got it. it. Just show them that one. This is the same block, except for in the corners is a half square triangle. You have to back up. Oh, I'm, you have to back up. Okay. You have to back up. So see how here's the center block, and I put, well, I put two of these together so that this block would be bigger. But if it just been the, this little one, little one, it'd be this very same block. So you're going to get to do this several times, this block. All right, now I'm gonna bring it back over to my board and I gotta remember which one is the top and which one is the bottom. Well, I know that my dark one, my dark red went to the top. I noticed that, okay? And this was my lighter red. So there's really three reds here. There's this dark red, this red orange, and then this orange. So three red family. They look the same on camera, but oh, they do. That's definitely lighter. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Alrighty. So now I'm just going to add again. So does it matter if I go from here to here? It doesn't really. But since I went from here to here before, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to lay that over. I'm going to lay that over. I'm going to lay that over. And I'm just going to continue. Now look, I've got this seam. But I don't have to match it to any seam here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it just so it'll stay open. So that my uh, feed dogs or my face plate won't catch that and bend that over. So Does I'm it just, matter which part of the seam that you pin? Yes, because look, my machine is going to go in from this side. So I don't want that one to get caught. This one lays the way I'm going to be sewing. This one... See how it lays the way I'm going to sew? Uh -huh. So I want to actually pin the one that doesn't lay the way that I'm going to sew. And I'm going to make sure... Well, let me show you something. Look at how this is just an itty-bitty bit off. You know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to go and I'm going to make sure that my block is the measurement it's supposed to be. So if this was a, let me see, what square was this? It doesn't tell me each square up. Okay. Okay, so you come over here, and whenever a, um, a pattern says to square up your block, now why they say, square up, you're not really squaring it up to anything, you're making it more accurate, okay? So this, I'm going to get out my, um, oh, I'll get this one out, it's a six and a half inch, and this block is six and a half inches. But you can see I've got some little scraggly edges. So I'm going to see how I'm going to line up right there. But can you see now, I'm going to just trim, and you're going to be able to see the little bitty hairs. Make sure that that's straight. I know what it's supposed to measure up to. And watch what happens. And it looks pretty good. But look what happens when I trim it. See that little bit of trim that I got off of there. Now the reason I can do that is because there's no points. There's no points on these seams. I'm going to turn it. Now this is the edge I squared up before, so I'm going to lay it right on the six and a half. I'm just going to trim that up ever so slightly, and it doesn't hardly take but a hair off. 
But now I know that this is perfectly six and a half inches, which is exactly what I'm gonna sew. If you'll come over here, Peter, and look at this block here, this block is a little bit lumpy. See that? Mm -hmm. Now that's gonna quilt out and that's gonna be just fine and I can press it a little better and it would be a little bit flatter. But I did not square this block up, but I did square this block up each time. Each time I made a square, I went to my ruler and I squared each one of these steps up every single time. That was a mystery to me, why this one looked like this. Why this and one didn't lay as flat. And I couldn't figure it out. Well, I wanted to do it. I wanted to demonstrate it that way. That this, just so that you why know. why you want to square By your taking off just that hair, wow. just that little bitty hair, wow. lets that block lay so much flatter because it's much more accurate. Now, if these had had like flying geese right there, or if the flying geese had gone this way, uh -huh. I would have had to have left it alone because I would have cut off that point probably, okay? So I would have just faked it. I would have just uh, just kind of eased it in and, and uh, worked with it that way. But because this doesn't have any points, then I can do that. So now when I lay that down, now let me make sure that my block is correct. Dark up here. Okay, so there's that. I'm not gonna rip any this week. I'm dead determined. And just as I say that, you know what'll happen? I'll do something wrong. I'll have to. But now look at how much better that matches up. See that? Jeez. There's no little hair hanging off, no little bitty, you know. It's perfect. Yeah, it just goes on there. Look at he split. So now I'm going to sew this. Now when you're sitting at your sewing machine, Peter, it's really important that your body be in front of your uh, foot. If you're over here a little ways, then you're not going to be as accurate. And if you're over here a little ways, you're not going to be as accurate. You need to sit so that you are your face is in right in focus of the uh, foot. And I know some people who sew standing up. Have you ever heard of such a thing? How do you do that? Well, I guess you stand up, but now I can't even see the foot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not going to work for me, Peter. <laughs> I think the machine has to be up higher. <laughs> but yeah, I have friends who... Uh, Who's so standing up? I think that's just a strange phenomenon. They have those stand up desks now, you know. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah, people like to stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, get their exercise in. Okay, now I'm going to do these just like before. And of course, these are already measured. Uh, these. I didn't ha haven't sewn a seam on, so they're already the right size. They were cut and came right out of my bag, like this. Don't you love that bag method where you just have all your ingredients right in the bag? All you have to do is open it up. You don't even have to think about it once you get it all done. My girlfriend does all of her food prep on Sundays. And then... You know, during the week, she doesn't have any food prep. She just can uh, put it in the freezer and get it out as she needs it. She has one of those, uh, oh, what are the, Instapots. Do you have one of those, Peter? Instapot? I do. I love that thing. Do you really? I don't have one. Now, I have a uh, air fryer that is a broiler, a grill, an oven, and an air fryer, and I really like that. My life's been changed from the because of the air well, fryer. Yes, I mean because of drumsticks the... in the air fryer is a game changer. Salmon in the air fryer, it's a game. changer. Oh, you changer. have an air fryer too, uh -huh. and an instapot. Uh -huh. You know, back in the day, the instapot was called a pressure cooker. You know, I thought it, it was a Dutch oven. Nope, wasn't a Dutch oven on a wood burning stove. No, nope, but it was a pressure cooker. I um, mean, before pressure cookers. Oh, uh, maybe. You got that heavy cast iron lid, Ooh, pressure yeah. builds up. 
Yeah. Dutch oven? I don't know. I don't know. Because does, does the Dutch oven go in the oven? Or on the campfire. Or on the campfire. Do you do a lot or of campfire cooking, Peter? No. No, neither do I. Okay, now remember what I said, that I can use these pieces because they don't interfere with my seam. And so before I go uh, and press without my clapper, which I'm not very happy about, can't wait till they all get here. How many do we have that we have people interested in? I know there's been a lot. Calling. Oh yeah, a lot of people have been calling about it. We got two sizes. We got the 20 inch, which is the kind I use, and then we got the 12 inch. Uh, I don't know what the price difference is on them, but uh, but they're they're a game changer. They really are. Okay, now I got all my components to my next row to my next courthouse steps, over to the iron. See, now just not as many um, big long seams this time as like last time. Well, and I'm betting too on that clapper you can just line up all your pieces yeah exactly if you're a chain piece and oh, line yeah. them all up and oh, then just definitely. iron straight down and definitely hello well, i'll be buying one of those you will if oh, there's yeah. any left they'll probably i'll have to wait till the next batch yeah it might have to do you press your seams open a lot i don't but i've been learning watching you press them open uh -huh. and it seems like it saved me a lot of struggle and grief it would because I never know which direction to press them in. Right, right. And a lot of patterns don't tell you. Right, exactly. Now, this one does. Uh, it's got a little thing, but I just ignored it because I knew all my pieces I wanted to have pressed open. Because when I start putting these blocks next to each other, I don't know where that seam's going to end up. That's so, how am I ever, yeah, how am I ever going to guess which way it should go? <clears throat> like, if all you were doing were nine patches, Definitely you could do uh, seams uh, one way and seams the other way so that they would kind of lock together. But if you're putting a nine patch with a, a log cabin with a star, you know, and then you just don't know where they're going to go. All righty, here we go. Back to our uh, sewing board. So can you see that we've got a rhythm going here? See that? So now we know that that's laying correctly, so we're gonna bring this to this. We're gonna pin. Now this time I have four seams on one side and two seams on the other side. So the first thing I'm gonna do, now see before we, we did it in the middle, remember that? Yeah, so this one we're gonna do a little bit different because our seams are not in the middle. Our seams are on the ends. So I just kind of fold that back. Let me start over here. Oh, I don't know why I went there. Okay, see now how I folded that back? And I'm going to walk that all the way up, making sure that it's right on. And then I'm going to go to this one. Well, actually, I'm going to go down here to this one. I like to kind of do it even. Okay, so see how I'm kind of having to move that in. It really didn't match up. And now, all I'm doing actually now is just making sure I catch that one so it doesn't get caught in my uh, face plate. All right, we're gonna sew it on. Now, one thing, since I don't have a pin here, it can slip out of place. Don't start with it looking like that, okay? You've got to bring that down and get that even before you even put it in your machine. Now, last week, I kept calling my stiletto a stabilo. 
Now, why I was doing that? Did I, you? Yes, I did. I How called did I it. not notice that? I don't know, but a Stabilo is the name of a company that makes art supplies. <laughs> and I have well, some of those. Your, where's your stiletto? I don't have it with me. Oh, yeah, I do. Let me see. It's in my little uh, to-go box down here. Show everybody my to-go box. This is what I take uh, to uh, stuff. Take. This is all my stuff I take that I have duplicates of that I, uh, when I go to uh, retreats and stuff. Now, there's not a stiletto in there. Huh. My stiletto may be at home. But what it is, is it's just a really sharp... Look at this fancy schmancy my uh, girlfriend's dad made for me. Whoa. It's a double-ended. It's got a big giant one there. See that? Oh, wow. Isn't that nice? A lot of times I just, I'm lazy and I'll just use my uh, seam ripper as my stiletto. But I have a nice brass one around here somewhere. It'd be nice if I could find it so I could show it to you. And I don't see it anywhere. Another pin cushion, Peter. Oh, and I was looking for I was, this. I was about to ask you if you had any pin cushions in there. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. Okay, one last place to look. Let's see. This is like looking through somebody's junk drawer at home. You know what? <laughs> I don't see my Stabilo. I'm going to have to look at home. See, I called it a Stabilo again. Stiletto. Okay, I don't have it. We'll just use our seam ripper. But it's a pointy, it's it's a it's just got a really nice sharp point on it so that you don't get your fingers close to your uh, needle. And you can guide things in to your needle without uh, dangering your fingers. All right, well that was fun. That was an adventure, wasn't it? See, this is where I could use it. See, I just grabbed my, uh, ooh, I probably did that too fast. I just grabbed this. If I think that this is going to move on me right here, mm -hmm. as it's going through, I will just use that to just hang on to that for the last few little stitches. And then, now, if this were uh, me at home, I would be doing both of those blocks at the same time. Okay? So that I could do... Um, I wouldn't have to stop and start so much. But I could do both of them at the same time. Now, when I put rows on like this... I tend to always put the smallest piece on top. Did you notice that? If you didn't, I, I didn't. just, I just wanted you... to point that out. Is there a reason? Well, it's because I think I have more control okay. over the piece. That makes sense. The weight's on the bottom. Uh-huh. The big stuff's on the bottom, and I can see what's going on. I don't have to... Uh, Think about whether that piece is folding up or, you know, I can see both of my pieces. If I had it under like this, see, I would be able to see that little small piece. And I wouldn't know if it was crinkling sure. up or anything. So I'm going to make sure that that's right on, square on. One of the ladies said that uh, that was the first quilt block she had made last week. And oh, her points awesome. and her points were dead on, Peter. Nice. Now that's not easy for your first block. Well, I've quilted for years and none of my seams or points ever matched. 
I mean, it took me a while to figure out that there was actually a way to make sure they matched. Yeah. But it sure does save you a lot of time and frustration. And if they don't match, do you just go on? Well, now, if for some reason, if I use the tips and techniques to match them and something doesn't match, I'm resetting it. There's no yeah. way. You're thinking about what did you do? Did you not cut it right? Did you not do your quarter seam allowance right? Or did you not press it right? Yeah. Those are the three questions you ask yourself. And I'm just going to run over here to the iron. If you want to just uh, stand up and be over my shoulder or whatever you want to do there, Peter. Now, see, if I were doing this on my clapper, clamper, all these seams would not be getting in my way. And I wouldn't have to be so careful not to bend them. And this block would be flatter. Now, what about starching as you go? I don't do it, but some people do. And that's okay. You know, that's how they get their seams to lay flatter. Flatter. Mm-hmm. Pun like, intended. I the, the stuff we sell, flatter. Oh, flatter. <laughs> that's right, I forgot. But anyway, some people do this. You know, I'll just give it a little mist of their best press or their spray starch. And they'll just give the whole block a little spray starch. See, I don't have to mess with that because I have the clapper and it really makes it flat. But this also does the trick because now look at how flat this block's gonna be. Did it take much of that best no, press? No, just, just a little, you know, the sound effects might do it for you. Like just a sprinkler. A, just a little sprinkler. Okay, that's so a very see now how block. that's a flat block. That is crispy. Okay, now come over here because I want to. Um, oh. I want to measure it again and see. I'm gonna have to get the full twelve er out, twelve incher. Let's see how big this block is. Okay, it's pretty darn close. I know that this is supposed to be an inch and uh, three-fourths, because it started out at two inches. An inch and three-fourths, so I'm gonna lay it on that line, inch and two, and then I'm gonna lay this one on inch three-fourths, and then I'm gonna be able to trim that up. See just the slivers that come off? That's all you're doing is you're just taking off those slivers. Now I'm going to put that right on what it's supposed to be. And now there's just nothing coming off. So see, that one was pretty darn square. Look at that. Nothing. This is all that came off. But I'll tell you, it makes a difference. Okay, let's go back over here and do it again. Lay it on the top. Okay, so this time we sewed this one on and this one on. Now we're going to go back to sewing this one on. And then we'll sew that one on. But before that, we're going to sew this and this. So see how we're doing it round by round? Now we're getting ready to make the next round. And how many times? I think we do this five times. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five times. So we're up to three. Well, this is our third one. And remember, you're going to do block three exactly the same way. You're just going to make sure that the colors are in the right place. So the colors will be different. And there's no seam in the middle, but you know what? That's a pretty big gap, and this could slide down while I'm sewing. And then that would not be good. See how much that could slide down? Uh-huh. So I'm just going to go ahead and force that up there and put a pin in it just for a little insurance. How much time does it take to put one little pin in and then how much versus how much time does it take to rip that out because it slipped down, right? 
And anyway, it's not about speed for me. It's really about just enjoying. I enjoy the hum of my machine. I can tell when my machine is running out of bobbin. So can I. Just because of the sound of it. Yep. Some people have to have a buzzer or something on their machine. Not me. No, not me. I can tell. So let me ask you a question. What, uh -huh. do, you do, how, what do you do with that bobbin when you get to the low point? What do you do with the thread on that bobbin? No, I keep sewing until I, r I run out. Okay. I don't stop. When my, I... my machine likes me to have a certain amount of thread on the bobbin. Oh, yeah? Because I can tell by how it sounds. Uh -huh. So I take the bobbin out. Oh, with and, a little thread left on? Yeah, and I was going to ask you, what's the best way to manage that thread for other projects? Like, is there a way to store it? Or, like, if I do hand sewing, how do you... Well, you just you leave, it on, Cause leave like, it on the bobbin. Leave it on the bobbin. Why would you put it anywhere else? It's just as safe on that bobbin. Now, I would not add thread to that bobbin and try to use it on your machine again, okay? Never load a bobbin that already has thread on it. That is a definite no, 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 all right? Okay, next one. Oh, you know what I, oh, never mind. Oh, what were you gonna say? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. Nut and honey. Nothing. Do they still make that uh, cereal, nut and honey? Are you a, Are you a cereal eater? We don't eat cereal at my house. Seasonally. I have it once a year. Is it like for your birthday or a no, special occasion? It's usually hot cereal and it's usually in the winter time. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we are not cereal eaters at our house. We don't have children. We don't feed real food to puppies. They have their own food. Love it, love it, love it. It's coming together. It's so pretty. Look at that. How pretty that is. Okay, now I've got to sew these. Little logs to my uh, courthouse steps. Little steps to my courthouse steps. They'd be logs if they were log cabins, right? They're steps when they're courthouse steps. The difference is in the courthouse steps, you're doing all the way around. Each time you're doing around. In, um, in um, log cabins, you do half of it one color and the other half another color. What about logs on the fire? Logs on the fire. I think that's a little hot for me to talk about. I don't know what that is. Is there really a block called Logs on the Fire? I've never heard one called Logs on the Fire. But you could invent be. it. You could invent it, Peter. You know what? Get to designing. Get to the designing. Yep. Peter's very creative. Um, he has lots and lots of creativity inside his little bones. Well, his bones are kind of big. It's not that he's a. It's not that he's an overweight fella. It's just that he's a, a giant fella. You know, he's tall. But to me, most everybody's tall because I'm not very tall. My husband and I are about the same height. He might be maybe half an inch taller than me. Ooh, when we got married, he had an afro. He was taller than me only because he had an afro. It was the 70s, Peter. Quit laughing. Well, I'm just picturing it. Yeah. I'm picturing it. It's pretty funny. Pretty funny. I'm going to sew on my ender. Did you ever have an afro? I did. I certainly did. Yes. That's when I was skinny. I was a cheerleader. No, I wasn't a cheerleader. I was a majorette. What's that? Uh, you know, well, I 
I, I was a flag corps. I was part of the flag, flag corps. corps. And I was in um, Highlighters, which is our musical group in our high school. Sang and danced and did the plays and all that. All that fun, entertaining stuff. See, now this wants to curl back on me. So I gotta get my fingers in there and I don't like it. So that's when I would use a, stabil a stiletto. A stabilizer. A stabilo. <laughs> I don't a know stabilizer. Why. No, not a stabilizer, <laughs> but my stiletto. Because I wouldn't want to get my fingers in there. Now, see, look, I want to show you. See, this is what happens when oh. you don't have a clapper. Oh, that's not good. Look. Uh-oh. Look at how much of that seam was not pressed correctly. That is a sixteenth of an inch. If I had done all these seams a sixteenth <laughs> of an inch, that would have been bad, bad news. So I'm going to bring it to the front. I want to open that seam up. Okay, now look, that's so much better. Okay, that's open now. It's got a little crease in there. But when I get my clapper, you better believe when I get home tonight, I will be fixing that seam right up, okay? All right, just another reason to have a clapper. Now there are clappers that are not hams, okay? The ham part is the part that helps you with the opening of the seams. That's that little rounded part. Ooh, we could have went and gotten a ham because we've got some hams out there. Hams are more for curved seams. For like a shoulder seam that goes like that, or a crotch seam that, you know, it, what do you call, a curve. Curve, yeah, curve seam. Not a curve like this, but a curve like this. Anything that's garment. rounded, like a sleeve or a right, collar. Right, more like or garment sewing. Cuff, pant cuff. Yeah. Anything that you want to steam into shape, too. Like yeah. You can steam your fabrics into shape just by precedent around the curve right right of the ham so that's why there's that's why the ham now the the clapper that we use has the wool on the top and it's just a straight but it's a curved like this it's a hump you've seen mine and it that's what really helps you get your straight uh, uh oh piece down your straight seams and uh and they lay so flat. Now, are you understanding that these colors are dark light? See that? This mm -hmm. one's just a little bit darker and this one's a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they show up on there or not that they're different colors. Okay, now, flip that one over. The blues are showing up. Are the blues showing the up good? blues are showing up. It was the red ones that were kind of hard to just see. Just the, that. They are very close. Those in particular value. two shades of red, the camera just wasn't picking it up. Yeah. They're close in value. Okay, now here again, I have one solid piece, but I have two seams. So I'm going to match up the ones that need to be matched up. And again, how I do that is see now it, if it's over here, I just kind of take my thumb and my now, finger and move it. Are we not using it. the pins because they're not points? Do we only use the pins, the straight pins when they're you points? You mean to go like this? To, yeah, like in yeah, the first block. Yeah, that's where we set the point so the that points. both both points came together. I gotcha. No points at this. All we're pinning this for is to just keep that seam open. So, so the fabric doesn't shift. So and the seam fabric is doesn't shift and the pieces stay in line with each other. I am going to put one here in the middle because I liked uh, about every three inches is kind of my uh, go to pinning. But I did want to pin there. Those are two. Those are closer than 
three inches, but because I have that seam there, I wanted to make sure that that stayed open. Now my most important thing, these are pinned so I know they're secure. This is not pinned, so it's got to have a little extra attention. Right there at the beginning, little extra attention. Put it underneath that foot. Hold it in place. Don't run over your pins. And again, I'm just guiding my fabric through. I am not pushing it. I'm not tugging on it. It just, the feed dogs are doing the work. I don't have to do any work. I just need to guide it along. Now I'm going to come to the end here. And again, it's not pinned, so I'm going to make sure, give it some little extra TLC. What does that stand for, Peter? TLC. Do you have any idea? Tender loving care. Exactly. A little tender loving care. I like to take a peek. Oh, yep, looking good. Looking good. Now see, had I left this one piece clumped over like it was first wanting to be pressed, uh -huh. this would be short out here, about a sixteenth of an inch. I wouldn't have had enough fabric because this would have ate up a sixteenth of an inch of my fabric, and then this would have stuck out long. Uh -oh. And that wouldn't have worked. You know you would have had to stop and fix that. Yes. So it's a good thing we fixed it before we got there, right? Correct. You gotta nip these things in the bud. Yes, you do. The bud has to be nipped. Are you a gardener? Yes. Are you? Yes. Organic? I love gardening. Not not really. It's it's hard to do straight organic gardening because uh -huh. you have to have organic seeds you have to have organic um, natural fertilizers uh -huh. your ground has to be organic and who knows what was there before you moved right in. exactly so it's, it, you can't really say it's organic unless they came out and certified that it mm -hmm. was organic but i do take every step i can to use the natural products and the you know natural fertilizers like chicken um uh, like uh, there's fish fertilizer and chicken fertilizer that you can use. Uh huh. I used to have a worm farm. Oh my goodness, that's the best. That's the best compost. That's there the is. best compost. Yeah, I used to have a big compost bin. I used to do that. Uh, what do they call it when you build up the boxes and you have boxes and you put your garden in a big box? Container. Container gardening. That's yes. it. I used to do that. Because like you said, you don't know what the soil is made of that's underneath there. Well, it's a lot of the microorganisms that help the plants grow. Right. That come from the compost that the worms make. Right. Well, yeah, I was really into that at one point in my life. Then I opened a quilt shop and my life stopped. It was all <laughs> about the quilt shop, which was good, too. I mean, I enjoyed both aspects. Okay, now, I felt that kind of come up a little bit, so I lifted it up just to make sure that it, it's still pinned down correctly. And I'm making, giving my little end of here some TLC. And I'm following it through all the way through. Okay, making sure that it stays in place, that it doesn't go off the end. Pressing. Seems like this verse we've done before. Second verse, same as the first. Is it third verse, same as the first? I think this is the third verse, and we have five verses. Again, I'm lifting 
and pressing, lifting and pressing. I'm not ironing. This kangaroo is eyeballing me. Look, is he? Look, look at him. Oh yeah. He's eyeballing me. Is it a he? It's gotta be a she, she's got a baby. I think it has to be a she. She's eyeballing me. She. What are we going to name her? We didn't get very many people. I think we only had one suggestion. Roo and Boo. <laughs> Baby Boo Boo. <laughs> and Roo. <laughs> Is that what we're going to call them? Roo and Boo? <laughs> Roo and Boo. Uh-huh. How rude. Roo and Boo. That's the only name suggestion we got. Look at how pretty that is. Let's take it over here and see how straight it is. You know, I've never squared up my blocks. Really? Some and blocks gotta, don't have to be, but some blocks I got a it's pile better. of them, so when I get home, uh -huh. I'm going to get out my square and trim them up. All righty, but now be careful, because if they've got points on them, you can't really square them up. Uh, okay? Okay. Don't really square those up. So these so, were squaring because they're... Rectangular. Yes, uh-huh, yeah. And the seams are getting longer and longer, and there's not points along the way to match up, to make sure it's staying square. See, we had all kinds of points along the way up there to stay square. How would you square that up anyway? It's too big. Well, you, <laughs> it is too big, but what you would do, Peter, is you would take your, I'm glad you asked, because you would take your handy-dandy. 120-inch tape measure. 128-inch tape measure. And you know how much it's supposed to be because your book tells you how big it's supposed to be. And it is right on spot, 36 and a half inches. Goodness. Because we had all these points and we knew these were accurate because we made them with that triangle square up ruler, remember that? So we knew each one of these were accurate. And as long as they fit together, they should have been squared up. Now, these, the, these seams over here, we don't have as many points of reference. I'm going to put this in my trash, but I don't, I don't want to trash it. We don't have as many points of reference. So, I know this is supposed to be 1 and 3 fourths. So, I'm going to put that on that 1 and 3 fourths line. And then I know this is supposed to be 1 and 3 fourths. And see, I don't have it on that 1 and 3 fourths line. But what I love about this is this diagonal line here. See how it gives me that point of reference and it gives me that little square? I know that is dead on one and three-fourths inches. Dead on right there. And as long as it's all the way down and all the way across, I know that this part of my block is going to be square. Now, see, all I'm getting off, really, are just some little stray hairs. Not that much. Not that much. But enough to make a difference. But enough to make the difference because you're doing it so many times. If it, if it were that big block over there, like I was saying, that we're going to make, but the pieces are bigger, you wouldn't have to do this as much because there's only one row and they're big. Okay, again... Just a little sliver, little sliver. Look at that. Okay, let's go back. Two more rows and we'll be done. Oh, now look, my, my thing moved, but now, uh -oh. now that my friend Peter helped me put the top and uh, know where the top of my board is, I know that I can turn it and it'll be the right way. So I now, know that my dark is on top. Since you took those out of the Scrabble box, is that going to mess you up on game night? Oh no, I probably have 6,000 easy Scrabble tiles. I buy them at the Goodwill the, the, uh, and I make signs. I have things all over my house. Like there's some right there that say quilter out of an old uh, that's like a special edition where the things are red the tiles are red and the little trays were red it says quilter I have some that say ho 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 for Christmas and I mean you know you got to make your own fun Peter you got to make your own fun okay now we're going to put these on here like this these on here like that 
This is going to be the perfect size. Trimmed that up a little bit. No, I'm not doing anything different than I was doing from the very beginning. But my seams are getting longer. Look at that. Big old long sleeve, uh, seam. So I definitely would not leave that willy-nilly hanging around. I would make sure I go to the middle. And if I didn't feel like that was secure enough, it takes me but a second to just put a pin in there, put a pin in here, and now I know they're secure and they're not going to be, you know, willy-nilly. I love that word, willy-nilly. Wonder where I learned that from. I'm sure it wasn't from the third grade teacher, but willy nilly. I'm a Hoosier through and through. Are you from Indiana, Peter? Uh huh. Born in Greenfield, Indiana, I was. How about you? Right here in Indiana, or in the Midwest. Right here Indiana. in the Midwest. In, 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 well, you're a Hoosier if you live in Indiana or you were born here. Can you be a Hoosier without being born here? Bred and born. Me too. Me Doubt too. it. Speaking of bred and born, born uh, I used to live next to a bread uh, factory warehouse. Oh, it smells so good. Ooh. Waking yeah. up to that every morning. Yeah. You could go and you could walk to the bread store and you could get a loaf of day-old bread for a nickel. That's better than sliced bread. That's, if you can get sliced bread for a nickel. It was even sliced bread. It was even sliced, yes. <laughs> so that was pretty good. Do you eat English muffins? I do like English muffins, yes. What about you? Well, do you, have you had Bay's English muffins? Never heard of them, Bay's. Have you had Thomas's? I've had Thomas's. Aunt Millie's? Aunt Millie's. Which do you like better? Uh, Thomas's. Okay, I challenge you to try Bay's. B-A-Y-S? Yes, yes. And do you find them right next door to Aunt Millie and Thomas? They should be in the same area. Same area. Or they might be the ones that are refrigerated, I don't know. But, oh my goodness, we had those. They're so good. I only used to eat Thomas's, but since I had Bay's, uh -huh. now that I have a Thomas, it leaves me wanting the Bay's. Yeah. Okay, you hear that, everybody. Let Peter know. It's the English Muffin Challenge. English Muffin Challenge. 2021. Hashtag. Fresh jelly on your... Fresh jelly or jam on your English muffin? Well, usually I am just can't wait to eat it, then I just put butter. Oh, but yeah. if I'm going to take my time and do it right, I'm going to have butter, and then I'm going to have blueberry preserves. Real butter? Real butter. Absolutely real butter. I'm very picky about my butter. Me too. Very what kind? picky. Um, I like the European butter. I do too. Um, I also like the Irish butter. Irish butter's good. Now, my mom, she would all summer long go along the railroad tracks, and she would uh, pick wild black raspberries. Oh, my goodness. Not blackberries. Black, black raspberries. raspberries. There's a big difference. Huge difference. Black raspberries are much smaller. My dad and I used to do that, and then we'd go home and um, pour cream on them and have cereal. Well, my mom made jelly. We didn't make jelly. We ate them fresh. And shh, that was some of the best jelly in the world. Ugh, black raspberry jelly. Wild black raspberry jelly. Her hands would be all cut up because, you know, they got splinter. Uh, they're like roses. Thorns. They've got thorns. Couldn't think of the word, name of the word. They've got thorns, and her hands would be all cut up. And She was a country girl at heart. Her name was Pat. Did she make blueberry jam? She did not. She strawberry didn't care jam. for blue. She did make a strawberry, both freezer and uh, jam. Um, 
regular kind and then freezer kind. Um, she, um, she was a great cook, good cook. Uh, but the only drawback to that is, is that she wouldn't allow anybody in the kitchen. <laughs> so now I don't know how to make any of those famous dishes that she made. And it was country cooking, you know, fried real with lard, fried potatoes, fried chicken, everything fried, everything. Fried pork chops, fried, oh, salmon patties. She loved to make salmon patties. That's something I haven't made. Really? Huh, yeah, I haven't made that yet. Yeah, I'll try that. They're good. Okay, look, next to the last round. This is so pretty. This is like a Mike Tyson knockout right here, folks. Yep. Knock, I can't believe. Knocking this block out of the park. Yep. I can't believe we're getting this block this flat without our... Well, it's this wool mat. This well, has, this, you know, this the wool very... mat does have the same wool uh -huh. as the clamper. Yeah. Since I've purchased one of these, my blocks have been marvelous. But that was before I knew about the clamper. Uh-huh. The wool mat is nice because it takes up the heat and sends it back up. So it's like you're pressing both, both sides, sides at once. You don't mm -hmm. have to press one side and then press the other. Right, right. Nice and flat. Look at that. Look at those little squares. Isn't it pretty? It's very pretty. I do love this colorway. This would look nice just by itself hanging up. Uh-huh. Well, you could do a whole quilt like this. And what you could do is, is when you get the, you know, all the blocks made, you would alternate. You'd put this uh, next to this on the next block and you'd just alternate them. Mm. Oh, it would be so pretty. Any of these blocks that we're gonna learn through this quilt, Peter, you could make a quilt just using those blocks. Or a combination of a couple. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is like a block library that you're building. It's a block party. It's a block party. We should have a party when we get done. Oh, that'd be awesome. If we're able to do that. Have everybody come in and reveal their quilt. Oh, I'd love that. Those are the best. Oh, I'd love that. Do a nice video in front of the building. Oh. Everybody holding up their quilts. Wouldn't that be special? And there'd be a few people that this is their first quilt. I know it. I know that's what would make it so exciting. Okay. Now, the reason that I don't have another row... I mean, this is the next to the last row, and the reason I don't have another row on my board is because my board wasn't big enough. There's another row? There's another row. Oh. But you know what? We don't have to do it. I think they get the point, don't you? Yeah, and I'm running out of stories. Are you really? Are now, you running out of stories? Peter, you know better than that. You know <laughs> I could talk from now till next week and not run out of stories. I do love to talk. But you know what my favorite thing to do is? Sleep. I love to sleep. Are you I don't a get to sleep a lot. Do you take naps? If I get a chance, you better believe it. But a nap for me is three hours. Might as well not even bother laying down on the pillow if you can't lay for three hours. But I do love a nap. Yeah. But I don't get them, you know. Don't get them that often. Okay, are you a, are you a early to bed, early to rise, or do you burn the midnight oil? Well, Chloe comes at five thirty in the morning, so I'm up at five thirty every morning. Okay. And uh, according to what my dad does during the night, see now he was up all night, so I haven't had any sleep to, last night. Okay. Because he was up and down all night. Um. So. We had pizza. Mm. for dinner, and we had some left over, and he just had to eat it until it was all gone. So he did it in shifts all night long. <laughs> That's the best way to eat pizza. <laughs> That's, evidently. I love it. Evidently. So, uh, bless his soul.
So he's full of pizza this morning. My husband comes over and babysits him while I'm babysits him and the dogs while I'm here at work. That's why I'm only allowed to work two days a week. Uh, so when he came over this morning and Dad was still up, he knew right away that I hadn't had any sleep. And he prays, prays for me every morning so that, you know, I don't fall asleep here at the sew machine. I better quit talking and think about what I'm doing here. Usually I can talk and think at the same time, but sometimes I can't. All right, I'm going to put this last row on. And then I think we're going to call it done. Uh, I will, for next week, I will have the last row on this block, and I will have block three completely finished. Now, can you show them my block two and three of my prim cottage or whatever that's called, primrose cottage? I don't know which is which, but these are the two blocks. See, they're made exactly the same. Is it the colors are reversed? They're not reversed. It's just that, no, because see, there's oh, no. no white in this one except for the center. There's a white here. And so I'm, I'm not quite sure. So I see something suspect. What is that? Well, the one on the right has white and pink. Right, in the little for squares. their blocks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And on this one over here, they're, they're all, all the green. same. Right, and so that's how is, it'll be. This looks like block So this two. one must be block two. You that are correct. Block you are three. correct, Peter. Yeah. I'm liking this block right below it. Yeah, this I one. I could do a whole quilt yeah, of just that block. That this is awesome. called the bear paw. Now, see, again, this is multiple blocks. Love so this, the bear paw. You would make this block, then we're going to make this section, then we're going to make this block. Mm. So this is more of a nine patch again, like this one, like the first one that we did. Is that called the, the bear paw in the honey pot? This is the bear paw. And then that's the honey pot? This must be the honey pot. No, this is a big star. Oh, okay. Okay, doesn't look anything like a honey pot. Well, the other one had a hearth, so. Uh -huh. Now, what does this one remind you of? Kind of reminds you of the first one we did, doesn't it? Because it's all half square triangles. And you would do it in fourths again. You see? Uh huh. But it's going to be a little more complicated because look these at all are those seams go in the center. Yeah, and all those in the center. And they lay pretty flat when I've got it down on a table. I've pressed it. Good. So I think that's where we'll leave you at today. Um, if you're not done with block one, that's okay. You know, you can revisit these uh, videos as many times as you need to. Remember, all the information is down underneath that little gray arrow underneath the video. That's where uh, all the information to the shop is, how you can order things. Again, I'll tell you the clappers are not here yet. They may, the guy... The UPS just brought in 17 boxes, so Nancy hasn't processed those yet, but as soon as they come in, we'll let the people who have them on order know, and if you need to order one or put your name on one, you can call Jennifer here at the store, and the phone number is right below, and if you want to subscribe, all that really does, I mean, it helps us, I think, in some kind of uh algorithm or something like that but if you want to subscribe what it does for you is that it lets you know every time we put up a new video so you won't miss out on any of these because you know there's 20 blocks and we're up to three so if you can get uh two and three made by next week then you'll be right along with us so we'll see you then so excited to be with you take care bye bye